Hello there, my brothers and sisters in Christ. May the peace of the Lord be with you. I'm so happy that you're listening to this message from Pastor Caroline. This week, Pastor Caroline draws from the ancient books of Proverbs and Psalms and from the ethos of the Scouts to talk to us about a life of abundance. The writings of Psalms and Proverbs originate more than 3,000 years ago. The Scouts were founded 100 years ago. The lessons of the ancient books and the Scouts both help us to understand a life of abundance and a life of service. Both of these help us to become a people of substance. Here are Pastor Caroline's words. I've also added after her sermon, the prayer for illumination and the Bible readings. Please enjoy. If you have any questions or comments, please post them and we will respond. Even better, join us on Sunday at 10.15 a.m., either online or in person. I'll get you a coffee after the service. Thank you. Last Sunday, our member Thomas Larson gave an update on his Eagle Scout project. We are grateful that Thomas chose our church as the beneficiary for his many hours of service. He updated the landscape design and raised funds to give our memorial garden a beautiful renovation. After years of serving as a scout, he will soon be honored with the highest achievement award. Historically, the Boy Scouts of America, founded in 1910, have worked to improve society by being prepared and honoring God and country. In 1912, the Girl Scouts organization was founded to do the same. Although teaching girls substantial skills such as hiking and camping were very atypical 100 years ago. The earliest Girl Scout handbook included instructions on how to stop a runaway horse, and how to tie up a burglar with only eight inches of cord. (laughs) The organizational details and activity have evolved over time, but the mission remains the same, to inspire young ladies to grow up just like the boys do, to serve God and country, and to help people at all times. The more I learn about scouts, the more I realize we still value organizations of substance in our society. I may have peaked as an elementary school brownie myself, but even the brownies are named for good elves instead of mischievous ones who do good deeds anonymously. These programs promote a sense of sacrifice for community and they teach our young people how to give back and participate in something greater than themselves. At our best, local church communities do that too. Involvement in the church is a lifelong endeavor of learning how to serve God and country. The greatest commandment to love God and neighbor is a call to help and serve. But sometimes the message gets diluted by various issues of our day. When we get distracted from that simple goal of love, we begin to look inward rather than outward. We ask questions like, what's in it for me? Rather than, what can I do for them? So the church community meets regularly, dare I say religiously, gathers to seek inspiration from above and read scripture and wait for the Holy Spirit to work through us. It's only God's movement within us that enables us to care for others, even when we are overly concerned with ourselves. As we hear in Proverbs, it is not our own insight or understanding, rather that of our triune God through the word that guides us how to live. Proverbs is a book of wisdom literature in the Old Testament. It's said to be written by King Solomon to his son. In today's lesson, we hear a few godly recommendations that are promised to result in named blessings. This is much like the practice of positive reinforcement. You know how in school, young students get really excited if their good behavior adds up to trinkets in a little bell jar and results in a prize for the class. 
If we do this, then we get that. Even better when we have to work together for it. It's not unlike Proverbs, really. Let me summarize what we just heard in the lesson. Keep the commandments, and you'll live a good, long life. Be faithful, and not only God, but people will like you. Trust in God, and be guided in the right direction. Glorify God with your possessions, and your cup will overflow. This ancient writing is more timeless than the Scout's motto. It's meant to be instructive, but also incorporated into our way of life, such that we don't tend to fall victim to an insular way of living. When we brood on the text, we hear an invitation to join in God's mission together. We may not think we have what it takes, but we all have something to give. Verse 9 suggests it's honorable to offer our substance. The Hebrew word can also translate to possessions or wealth. It goes on to reference the Israelite practice of tithing, offering one-tenth of the first fruits of the harvest in God's name. Giving the first fruits is a big sacrifice. It's an exercise of faith. It teaches us that when we come together as God's people with our gifts, it will result in something more beautiful than we could do individually on our own. This kind of discipline is an investment in God's ministry. It is a way to offer back what the world values, a step toward entrusting treasure to God. Our substance, our tangible things, as well as our time and energy can be used to bless other people with a little intentionality. Our substance can be behind our words and our actions. We can think about this in all that we do. Proverbs says that generosity can return blessing, which means we can give and give and give of ourselves, and miraculously the well won't run dry. When Jesus spoke to the woman at the well about living water, he didn't advise her to bring a bigger bucket for herself, because it's not about the quantity when it comes to God. It's about recognizing and celebrating an abundant life together. Shelby Hudgens was a man of moral substance. When an awful snowstorm hit the Colorado Springs area where he resided, he spent two hours pushing out strangers' cars that had gotten stuck in the snow. He had fallen on hard times himself, becoming impoverished and homeless but he had muscles and time to give to help other people get on their way. A witness to his good acts learned of Hudgens' woes, and so he set up a GoFundMe account to help him find a place to live. Donors ended up contributing more than $22,000 to the effort. One person wrote, the world needs more people like this young man. A third-grade teacher in Massachusetts won a $150,000 cash prize in a contest from Capital One. Miss Bowlerman had entered Capital One's Wish for Others promotion, her wish being that each of her students would leave for their December break with a book in hand. She wrote in her entry, their love, and their love for reading and life is contagious. So Capital One delivered three books to each of Bullerman's students and also gave her the entire $150,000 check. But rather than keep the money, Miss Bullerman decided to donate it all back to the school. Generosity and good deeds can be as contagious as love for reading and life. I don't know if either of those people were practicing faith or just trying to do a good thing for someone else. It doesn't matter what 
our inspiration is or where it comes from if we are seeking to do our best to love our neighbors. Yet as children of God, who also seek to love the Lord in all that we do, when we reflect on our motives, we become very humble. We begin to see where God has moved in our lives, whether we were aware of it at the time or not. And we realize that our abundant God continues to offer us more than enough to share. When we look upward rather than inward, then we are directed outward. Proverbs says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your produce, and then your barns will be filled with plenty. These wide adages remind us that we were not created to be independent individuals. As much as we promote self-sufficiency, we also celebrate that God gathers us together asking us to contribute what we have so that he can multiply it. For when we compile our first fruit, we grow a harvest that makes a substantial impact at the holy food bank. When we honor God in a generous way, then we become a people of substance. Thanks be to God. Amen. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. May we approach your word today, holy God, with the reverence and respect it deserves. Let us be intentional in our listening and focused in our minds as we hear your word read and proclaimed today. Amen. The lesson today is from the Psalms 118, chapters 1 through 9. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. With the war Lord on my side, I do not fear. What can mortals do to me? The Lord is on my side to help me. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put the confidence in mortals. It is better to take reference, refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. The word of the Lord. Our second scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Proverbs, which can be found in the Old Testament section of your pew Bibles on page 585, if you would like to read along. Listen now for God's word to you this day. Proverbs 3, verses 1 through 12. My child, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For the length of days and years of life and abundant welfare they will give you. Do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good repute in the sight of God and of people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge him, 
and he will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be a healing for your flesh and a refreshment for your body. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. My child, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be wary of his reproof. For the Lord reproves the one he loves as a father, the son in whom he delights. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. 